this COVID time, because certainly this time is going to be a challenge for everyone. It's going to be a challenge to work out how we reach customers while keeping social distancing, how we do our businesses safely, how do we keep our staff safe, how do we do all those things in a way that effectively connects with our customers and makes sales, but also keeps everyone safe and generates business along the way. So um, welcome everybody. Uh, our first speaker is uh, Stephen Stephen Ruskin from Huawei. Um, I'm going to allow him to steal the um, screen. So uh, we just thank you for his contribution. So Stephen is um, the head of sales and distribution for Huawei, currently employed with Huawei for the last one and a half years. He's been a part of the solar industry, solar coaster from 2013. And prior to 2013, he ran his own business for over 10 years in manufacturing and distribution. Okay, great. Oh, well, thanks for the introduction, Tim. So, uh, as uh, as uh, as per the explanation, so I'm head of sales for Huawei. Um, so I'll be doing the presentation today. So thanks again for the opportunity for one stop uh, to speak. Um, so I thought I'd just start off uh, briefly just with a background on Huawei, who they are. Uh, obviously, a, a Chinese company um, started off over 30 years uh, out of Shenzhen. So um, now they've moved into a, a giant ICT uh, telecommunications company. Uh, they've got over 170 uh, countries, uh, regions around the world that they sell and have staff in, uh, 194,000 employees. And probably one of the biggest takeaways there would be the Fortune 500, so number 61 in Fortune 500. Um, in addition to that, uh, probably would be um, sales. So the sales revenue is uh, over $121 billion. That was for 2019. Uh, the, other, the other factor is, uh, just looking at the screen, would be the R&D uh, centre. So you can see that uh, up on the screen there, that is actually an R&D centre um, that houses around 10,000 R&D um, staff members. Um, so moving into the next screen, you can see, um, so Huawei uh, probably many years ago didn't have huge uh, consumer recognition. Now, I think uh, more, more so with, uh, with phones. So uh, a lot of customers in Australia can now resonate with phones. Um, they now moved into number, number two in the world for smartphones. So over 240 million smartphones have now been shipped uh, all around the world. Um, so that has now increased the brand recognition of Huawei, uh, in particular, not just globally, but in, uh, in Australia. Um, so, yes, yeah, so over 240 million uh, have been sold. Um, so originally, and we've had Mr. Trump there that have uh, given Huawei a little bit of a hard time. So um, we've, we've had quite a bit of uh, publicity, whether it be good or bad. So, um, yeah, because of the 5G, but uh, the good thing is at least it's got brand recognition out there. So there are a lot of customers that now know Huawei here in Australia. Um, so I thought, it, so the next thing I mentioned in the first slide was R&D. So Huawei use uh, and spend a lot of money in R&D. So over 10, 10% uh, annually, uh, which is uh, annualised at $70 billion, sorry, over 10 years, over the last decade is $70 billion. So annualise that out. As 10%. Uh, you can see uh, in R&D spend in 2019 almost uh, $17 billion. And when you're talking about, about a global level uh, ranked number five in the world uh, under, under Microsoft for R&D spend. In addition to that, um, they have over 87,000 patents. 90% uh, of those were patents for, for innovation, uh, including 5G, AI technology, and also AI-powered uh, solar. Um, so, so Huawei uh, is only string-based inverters. There's no central. So um, when you're looking at the market, uh, you can see in 2016, we had a lot of central-based uh, central inverters, um, which, which took about uh, around six, uh, just over 6% of the market. 40% of the market was for string. Fast forward to 2020, and you can see that the the scale has shifted to 60-40. Uh, so we're now seeing um, 
the not just in utility, but in CNI, or more importantly in utility with string. But you can see that we're transitioning to now 6040 uh, to more string solutions rather than central. Uh, in addition to that, you can see that Huawei has also exported or shipped um, from 2000, actually 2015, 2019 has been the number one uh, PV uh, inverter uh, of global shipments um, accumulated across the, the world. Um, in it, so that comes to a grand total of 118 gigawatt. When you consider the Australian market was only, was four gigawatt last year for, for CNI, utility and resi, that's a huge accomplishment. So that's, uh, that's a little bit of background about uh, Huawei as a company. So what I wanted to do next was uh, in the theme of uh, social distancing and, and limiting face time, um, face to face time, I really wanted to, to put forward um, some information that, that can help installers uh, and also what Huawei are doing with regards to our current action plan. Um, so if you're looking in, into January, <clears throat> you can see that uh, on the scale here that uh, the prevention and control um, and tracking sheets were implemented. We had um, health and safety checks, uh, disinfection. Uh, we also have huge public awareness. So this is into January then. Uh, I know that I was over in China in January uh, just as the um, just as it broke out and, and every staff that came back during the January period was was given um, was told to work from home as well as uh, monitor um, and, and have um, have self checks on a daily basis so then moving into the action plan for two uh, for February uh, for COVID-19 we had a, it was more was closely uh, monitored uh, we had so a lot of the multifunctional training centers we, we closed down so uh, a lot of the common areas we closed uh, we had regular monitoring of suspicious cases we also had a uh, emergency plan devised uh, we had pandemic um, uh, prevention EDM so what does that mean um, we also had uh, we had a distribution of, of masks uh, hand sanitizers and gloves um, across all of our staff as well, and they were made, made aware. Uh, moving into March, we also had daily temperature check-ins. So every time I went into the office in early March, we were checked um, for uh, high temperature. Um, in addition to that, we had no clients coming in or out. They were very all restricted. Um, no international or no or or domestic travel. So we um, were a sponsor of the CEC. Uh, we were unable to um, to move in and go into state um, under the CEC, which were all cancelled. But um, as a mandate from Huawei, they said no no travel, uh, and all staff were told to work from home. Um, then moving into just recently, um, we have we have a, a daily EDM that goes out to all the staff, to around 500 staff Huawei, and just reporting of no suspicious or confirmed cases of COVID-19. Um, we also had uh, a mandate to work from home, and I thought this was pretty innovative. They also came up with a, uh, a care staff care kit, so um, you could actually have delivered free of charge <clears throat> masks, hand sanitizers, and gloves. So I thought that was a, a good initiative of Huawei. So I just thought I'd talk also about um, what we're doing. So what Huawei is doing with regards to you know, business as usual. So we wanted to continue to run the business. Um, so we use a, a program which is called WeLink. Um, so this is a plug-in to Zoom. So what we've done is um, just through video, uh, continuing to do video and conferences. Um, we're, we're continuing to, to educate our customers. Um, we're, we're trying to obviously uh, generate sales and leads, close deals. Um, and we've been doing this for the last... I mean, we've had this... Sit this system implemented for quite some time. Um, the the We Link uh, conferencing is a worldwide highway system, so it has been implemented for some time. But obviously, um, it's been utilised a lot more. Uh, moving to pre-sales, um, so we've got a, a good pre-sales team. Uh, I know, being in the industry since two thousand and thirteen, it's it's really important to have a local presence. You want to make sure that you're speaking to Australian people here in Australia and and getting good support. So we have fourteen staff based here in Chatswood, where I work out of in New South Wales. Um, in addition to that, we've had a, a new staff member who, um, who also has experience in inverters, Derek. 
So he's joining us. So we'll, we'll have uh, another addition to the team to support the installers and EPCs here in Australia, which is great news. In addition to that, we also have a call centre, which is a 24-7 call centre. Um, so that's, uh, that's a 1-800 number. Again, um, this will reduce uh, time on site. Uh, probably one of the main advantages, which I'll talk later on, is uh, the fact that they can diagnose um, through log files. So through um, we can diagnose problems and, and error code, et cetera, through, through uploading log files, which I'll talk a little bit later on. Uh, so, yeah, so sorry, coming back to supporting installers, this, this is what we'll be looking at to do. Uh, so uh, we've got a huge installer network and we want to support the installers, same as uh, Stop Warehouse. So what we need to, what we'll be doing here is um, we need to be looking, uh, we, for, this is here looking at um, our optimised solution. So we, we really want to reduce time. So installer times or installers reducing their time um, and we can do this by by um, implementing a, uh, a Huawei uh, high high silicon chipset. So as you can see on the screen, so we've done this. Um, this is through uh, which I'll talk predominantly on the optimized experience. So for optimizers, um, so this is done through again. This is done through on the screen. You can see this is done through AI technology. So um, oh, it's by so if you're looking at uh, the way this, this will work, you can see here on the screen um, that uh, within half the time, you can actually pair up um, the optimizer. So you can see that um, it take around the normal um, to pair up uh, optimizers in a standard 10 kilowatt job will take around about three minutes. So within half the time, due to uh, Huawei's uh, AI technology, we're again, saving time, um, saving installation time and less time on the roof. So again, um, you know, going with a the theme of, of less um, of social distancing and less time, less face-to-face -face time. So this is any saving the installer time, time and money. So uh, again, on the theme of AI, so this one again is, um, so this is AI boost. Uh, so the way this works is it's um, automatic mapping. Um, so, so what it does is it allows the customer, so it allows the installer to cut, uh, cut and paste the QR codes you can see there. From there, um, they can take a photo of the QR codes uh, on, a, on, a, um, on a sheet of paper, upload the, upload the photo. Uh, once you've uploaded the photo, um, within five seconds, um, you'll, have, you'll have a physical layout of this on, on your smartphone. Um, so from there, uh, once you have the physical layout, you can then uh, you can then go end-to-end -end commissioning, as you can see there. So that again will save uh, another uh, instead of it being 15 minutes, so uh, a full 15 minutes for the layout, and also 15 minutes to create the um, the physical um, photo as well. That will that will save you round about 93% uh, of your time. So. Again, saving a lot of time um, on on doing uh, on installation time. Um, so again, this is saving the installer a lot lot of time. So the other good thing, um, yeah, as I said, this is that there's no manual setup here. Uh, it's all it's all there's no because that's where your time here. Your, your time here is normally on setting up for uh, your manual layout, and you don't need to do that. So as you can see, once this is configured you can get panel level monitoring on every panel, as you can see there on the screen. Okay. Um, so um, what I wanted to do is talk a little bit about uh, social distancing is, again, with the theme here and, and uh, some of the um, diagnostics that we can, we can use here. So we have a really important feature here. Again, um, this is to do with, uh, this to do with uh, Pinpoint. Um, it's called pinpointing or arc faults or trying to trying to verify and, and secure and see where an arc fault is. Um, again, this is to do with optimizers and, and panel level monitoring. You can see uh, here on the screen uh, that you can you, well you can save up to eighty percent on time uh, of troubleshooting, um, and a huge cost would be incurred if you were to just turn up manually. 
So if, you, if you're looking at just the old way, which is a manual detection of DC arc faults, let's say on a 10 kilowatt system, this can take up to five hours. So um, it, there's a huge um, time uh, and resources that can be saved. So using this method through, which is a, a patent um, authorised, approved patent of Huawei's, um, and using this particular arc fault uh, pinpointing, um, you'll you'll have uh, you can run a report and you can uh, resolve the problem within 30 minutes. Um, so and probably the, the best factor, and again, going back to to social distancing and and face to face, um, less face to face uh, time. Again, you can do this is all done remotely, so you don't need to drive in, you don't need to go on site. You can do this remotely from from your smartphone. Um, so this can be done from the office. So you don't need to go another again, another on-site visit. So again, saving installers a lot of time and effort um, in particular. So this only taking 30 minutes is, has huge upside compared to you know, going up on the roof and, and testing things manually with, with a total, total time around five hours. Um, so I also wanted to speak a little bit about um, large scale scenario here you can see. So Huawei offers and has offered for quite some time a really good um, opportunity in O&M. Um, so you can see here, so this is called an IV curve um, diagnosis. So with the IV curve diagnosis, um, for within two minutes, it can it can, you can run and locate um, on one click, no inspect inspection needed, you can run a report um, and a diagnosis. So. So this, um, so if you were to put this in, let's say, um, this can take up to, let's say, 10 minutes. Uh, it, once you run the report, sorry, once you run the diagnosis, within 10 minutes, uh, you get an auto-generated report. This is typical for, let's say, a 100 kilowatt system or same thing, if you deal one megawatt, it's still 10, 10, 10 minutes for the report. From there, you get a generated, um, accurately generated, diagnosed 14 types of module five, um, module faults, I should say. So you get up to 14 different module faults. So this could be hotspotting, PID degradation, um, diode short, short uh, circuit, um, earth fault, uh, a number of different, um, uh, a number of different areas that will, that will um, come up. So you might, so down the bottom in the middle, you see the conventional offline di diagnosis. So to send somebody out there, uh, an installer out there or an O&M specialist, that potentially could take one day, so a full day to do this. And um, so again, utilising uh, Huawei's technology, being a technology company, um, this, this could be utilised and, and reduced, uh, again, saving less, staying with the theme of, of less day-to-day -day, um, uh, face time and also, uh, you know, social distancing, et cetera. Um, on Huawei platform, um, this can be done within two minutes. So within two minutes, um, up to 100% of the strings can be scanned, um, and then a report is then is then written. So again, saving a lot of a lot of time, money, and resources. Now, with the old conventional way, um, this may take a, you need to write the report and then analyze the report. With Huawei, with a push of a button. Um, you will get a, a really good report that's diagnosed and um, comes up with all of any of these 14 error codes. So a really strong uh, selling point and a, and a great way to, um, to reduce costs on site. So this, this technology isn't something new to Huawei. Um, this has been around for a long, long time. So as you can see on this slide, we have over five gigawatt employed, deployed, I should say, um, all around the globe, uh, from Turkey to, to Taiwan to Malaysia. Um, so this isn't something new that's, well, wait, this is out there, it's working, there's five gigawatts. So put that in comparison to the Australian market last year was four gigawatt. So if you think about the whole of the Australian market um, has already been deployed at a global level. Um, so this does work. It's a, it's a really, good, uh, really good functionality of Huawei for our, um, for our inverters. Um, just looking down the scale, you can just see quickly on the top four PV module failures, you know, diode, short circuit, abnormal output, um, you've got an open circuit uh, string or even glass breakage. So they're the top four 
So you don't need to go out on site to do this. You can just do this remotely. Um, again, less interaction uh, and a lot of savings as well. Um, so moving into the last couple. Um, so looking at, uh, at, this, at this slide here, so probably, um, probably a couple of the, um, the main things to consider here is, uh, I think I mentioned that earlier. So this is, this is to do with a remote log export. So you can see here, we have a remote log troubleshooting. So what this allows, um, allows you to do is, uh, and more importantly, is for us to analyze, is for Huawei to analyze uh, any of the troubleshooting um, information. So, uh, anal sorry, analyze the log files. So we can analyze the log files. Uh, once, once we're connected online, we can see this. The log files can be sent to any of our local team here in Australia or to the team, the 24-7 team. Um, the data is analysed that we can then see where, where, the, where the trouble or the errors are occurring and then we can rectify the problem um, under warranty. And uh, yes, why well, has a 10-year warranty um, and we will ship the goods out. Not a, not a second-hand inverter. It was a, you'll receive a brand-new inverter if that is a problem with the inverter. So... Again, this is, uh, this is a great way of, of limiting uh, time, resources, uh, and again, um, helping the installers. So um, probably the last thing I'll talk about is we have, a, we have an offer at the moment, which is a, a free offer. Uh, um, so this is, this is um, what we're offering as Huawei is offering at a global level for our ongoing support during COVID-19, being a very difficult time. We've offered, um, this should be th for three months, we're offering this smart, uh, remote smart IV curve diagnosis. So, yeah, so um, it can be used on, on uh, commercial uh, inverters as well as uh, anything in the large scale utilities. Please uh, get in contact with your business development manager at One Stop and we can look after you uh, with, with this. So, um, I think that's uh, sort of it for me. Um, so I've just put these couple other um, guys on the screen. Um, you can see Heidi Khan, he's our product and solution manager. Um, we've also got uh, Daniel Lin there, he's our uh, deputy managing director. So um, I'm not sure, uh, are we going to be taking questions now or? Um, we might take them at the end if that's yeah. okay. Okay, all right, no problem. Um, okay, that's it for me. And um, thanks again, everyone, for listening to the presentation. And um, Fantastic. Thank you. We've got that thing. Yep. Really appreciate your talk and um, really appreciate the way the technology helps the guys not necessarily have to be on site. Um, I thought that was really interesting. Yeah, thanks, Tim. Yeah, we tried to, you know, obviously being that uh, one of the main focus of today, it's, it's good just, again, in the theme of social distancing, I felt yeah. like, uh, it was good just to limit that face-to-face -face time and bring the, the technology of, of Huawei um, and where, how it's evolved um, to, to, today's, uh, to today's issues that we have. Fantastic. Thank you, Stephen. Um, we're going to be running one of your videos a bit later on as well, just as a bit of a, a station break. So um, we look forward to seeing that. Um, I just wanted to talk about um, where um, our sponsor's money is going. So we, we're basically going to be donating um, the partnership money that we get from these events um, to the hospitals around Sydney. Oh, sorry, the hospitals around Australia. So we haven't um, finalised what that amount is, so we'll let everybody know what that amount will be. But um, we just thought it'd be really a great way to support the people who are actually working on the front line of COVID, really facing um, the scary part. Um, my wife's a nurse. She works in the emergency department. So I can tell you that... Um, that they're doing really, really amazing things in order to protect themselves, but also just help um, patients and help people who are maybe not even suffering from COVID, but coming into emergency and needing to, to be helped and assisted. So we're really going to be using um, a, a good chunk of the funds that we, we raise from this to, to help those people. So appreciate that. Um, speakers, I'm your next speaker. And so I'm going to be helping you learn about social media. My background is um, in social media 
and marketing and advertising. So um, I'm going to be giving you a bit of a run through how to um, how to build social media into your solar business, and um, hopefully we'll be able to um, expand how you're using social in your business, how you're using Facebook, how you're using um, LinkedIn and Instagram. LinkedIn will definitely be covered by Andy but yeah just a way to raise um, how you reach out with content what processes you may or may not have um, got involved in in doing social so um, quick background on me um, I'm a um, graphic designer from trade I've worked my way through advertising agencies worked my way um, through developing marketing plans and marketing programs for blue chip companies and then i've moved into social media which is obviously where eyeballs are at the moment so hopefully um i'll be able to open um your understanding and your knowledge of that um what does this slowdown mean for business we're essentially going to have time on our hands. Um, and that can be a good thing and it can be a scary thing as well. If you've been running a busy business and doing stuff and getting your products sold and your installations um, put up, then this might be a bit of a scary time in the, that you might not be getting the same amount of business, you might not be getting the same amount of calls, but you can do things to shore up relationships with existing customers and to reach out and get relationships with new customers so use this time wisely use this time well um, if you're at home um, with the lockdown or the, the the social distancing if you're working a bit more from home use the time to, to develop your business to work on your business while um, while you reach out to customers um, through social, through using Facebook. So I'd like to think that this crisis is, is more like an opportunity, that it gives us a, a great sort of chance to take a breath and to think about how we can sharpen the business, how we can reach out, perhaps in a different way if you've been doing telephone, telephone calls, um, the telephone sales, that you can supplement that um, and reach out and connect with with your customers through telling social stories through telling um, and involving yourself in in the social media platforms so that's um, where I think this slowdown can actually I guess give us a chance to sharpen our business and maybe um, rethink the way we do business um, and use that time as an opportunity so what does this slowdown mean um, this is a graph of um, all the searches for the word solar panels, solar inverters, um, solar battery and solar energy and as you, in the last seven days. And as you can see, there's been a big jump um, definitely in the search term for solar panels. And if you see that little blue line right towards the end, you can see it's going up at a fairly high trajectory. And I know at the moment we've all been looking at things like how to flatten the curve. Well, this is one curve that might actually be of interest to us in that it's going up. And so I think what's happening is that people are at home, they're spending a bit more time thinking about what it's like to be at home for a long time. This might go for another six months or more, who knows. Um, but if it does, then people want to shore up their castle. They want to shore up their homes. And if that's the case, having something like solar energy um, is, is something securing, something that that, that can, can help um, people feel as if their home is safer. So I think there's a real opportunity at the moment to at least see the trend in that, that people are thinking about solar as something that they're searching for in Google and reaching out and trying to get that, um, uh, that understanding and that knowledge. So now might be an opportunity to give your customers and uh, new customers information about you that might move them onto that path. Um, why social media? Um, it's a two hundred, uh, two point five billion dollar um, reason because essentially there's every every month on Facebook there's about two hundred two point five billion active users, um, which means that if Facebook was a was a country, 
it would be actually substantially bigger than China. Um, and so I guess if we know that, that, that Facebook is that big and we know that, that on um, YouTube you've got two billion users, on um, Instagram you've got one billion users, on uh, a platform called TikTok, and I don't know if you're aware of TikTok, it's a bit more of a youth-based video um, platform where people um, perform short skits and videos and dances and, and entertain in a, in a short format um, way, there's almost 800 million people already using that platform. It's grown really quickly. And then there's LinkedIn with about 660 million and Twitter with about 330 million. So the balls are there. It's just using these platforms in a way that's going to grab people and get them to, to, um, to, to notice you. That it, there's lots of content, there's lots of stuff happening. So the, the real trick is how do I get noticed amongst all the rest of the noise? But, um, yeah, certainly when we see the demise of media platforms like newspapers and magazines, um, we know where that's going. The eyeballs are, mo are on social media. Um, so what does this mean? It means in Australia, at least, there's about 71% of users um, who actively use Facebook. So um, that's a huge percentage of our population, um, 56 for, for LinkedIn, seven, uh, 46 for Instagram. Um, and that means that these usage rates are only going to go up with boredom because people are at home, they're sitting around, they pick up their phone, they're multitasking when they're working, um, watching TV. They might be having two or three screens in front of them when they're engaging um, in social media. So um, they'll have a phone, they'll have um, a TV screen on, they might even have a laptop sitting on um, in the room as well. And so there's all these channels of information happening, but it means that Australians especially are, are getting more and more switched into these spaces. Um, and if you look at that um, in terms of uh, mobile subscriptions, just this thing um, in our pocket. Now, um, actually, why don't we play a little game? Hand up um, in the chat room, or if you put a one in the chat room, to say that you've got a mobile phone. And then put a two in the chat room if you've got more than one mobile phone, which would be my um yeah, look at that. See, there's one, one, one. Um, lots of phones. So that really, when you look at the numbers, there's about 130% of uh, mobile subscriptions to the Australian population. That means that most of it, there's 30% more people have more than a f more than one phone. Um, and also, if we look at that that pink circle, um, there's 16 million um, 16 million. Uh, mobile social users um, using social media on their mobile. So we have to think that mobile is where it is and that, that while we have our websites, that where people are engaging in social media, where people are engaging um, in search and, and looking around is in the mobile space. So if your website is, isn't, doesn't look great on your phone, that might be a, a great place to start. Um, so if we move to the next channel, um, we're all adapting to this new digital relationship. Um, uh, that th these platforms are now going to become our new neighbours, that this is how we're all going to connect either through um, FaceTime or video conferencing on Facebook or on even LinkedIn's got a video platform. Um, that all these places are now a digital neighbourhood, that we don't go outside, that we actually talk over our fence, but our fence is the social media platform. So just remember that, that, that when you're reaching out now, you're actually talking over the fence to your neighbours, even if your neighbours are you know, across the country. It doesn't really matter. We're using these platforms now like... Um, they're, they're, we're all one big small village in a big global village. Um, things you can do now. One, take a big breath and just think about <laughs> where you stand in business at the moment. Um, it's it's going to be a time where, where we all um, feel slightly nervous about things. 
Um, but it's okay to to relax and just allow a, a time to reassess business and reassess the market, reassess how things are happening because there are it's it's you know it's a dramatic time for many 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 people across this country and across the planet, and so supply chains are going to be. Um, broken there's going to be communication chains the demand on the internet and the interweb is going to go up and up and up so um the, all these things are going to create tension so allow yourself time to to assess and adapt to the new realities that we're in um Define your why. It's a good time at the moment to think about your business and define why you're in business and what you're doing. Um, define why you're different in the marketplace. Define how you talk to your customers differently to the next guy. Work out your why you're in business, your why customers connect with you, your why, the, how you solve their problems, how you solve their needs. And so if you can define your why, that helps you build your story, helps you work out what you want to say about yourself. Um, then thirdly, define your tribe. Um, define your audience. Work out where they live, where what social space they might be working in. Spend some time to do some research and get a sense of who you're going to be talking to and where they, um, what platforms they work on. Um, then four, tell your story. We've all got a story. We've all got that thing that we do that's different, that makes our business unique. Spend some time to work out that story because the story will probably not change. The medium will, how you tell it, whether you tell it in video or how you tell it, uh, whether you tell it as, as posts, that kind of thing will change. And then thirdly, make the connections. Allow these stories to go out into the internet. Allow them to be seen and people to engage and allow the conversations to happen in the chats and allow those those um, moments where you do get um, a connection or a, a meaningful contact, allow yourself time to, to develop and grow that. Um, Spend some time on your brand and your brand identity. So your brand and your brand identity are not the same thing. Think about your brand as everything that people think about your business. So it's basically what they say about you when you're not in the room. So it's what's in their head about you. Um, think about your brand um, as if it is a story that you want people to know is your story so if you can the more you can adapt their understanding of you the more that their understanding of you meets your expectation then the closer your branding is to your customers um, understanding and then work on your brand identity your logo your livery your truck signage you know the the things that you can actually sharpen and 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 fix and, and, and develop um, and work with people, um, designers and stuff remotely. So all of that stuff you can um, buy and purchase and, and, and organise um, fairly easily from a distance. So it's a good time to look at all those things, um, what I call brand touch points, everywhere your customer sees you, um, whether that's um on their social media pages, their Facebook page, their Twitter page, your Twitter handles, all those things that, that identify you as you and that people recognise as your company or your business. Spend time to really get to, to sharpen that and help people understand you. Um, what have we got? Sorry. Um, think mobile first i already said that we've already seen everything um is is basically people engage with the internet now on their mobile phone so really spend some time to look at your website make sure that it does work on mobile and that people can shop by mobile i know that you you might not have thought of setting up a, a, a an order a service via um a web store but there's um there's lots of ways of getting stores built that will uh, relatively easy where you put a product price and a description and people can buy from you so even in the solar space i think um you can adapt that to work um 
yeah, again, work on your, your look and make sure that all of those things work. Content marketing. Now we're into this, the side of social media where what story are we going to tell and where? So you've got basically your social media posts, your Facebook posts that you put up that might have a picture and a description, a story, and people like and engage with those posts. You might put a, an ebook up, um, which is like a downloadable PDF file, a brochure that kind of thing your podcast you might want to get a supplier or another customer and and just have a chat about your service and theirs um, via something like um, zoom where you can actually record the conversation then you can pump that up into the web and tell that story as a as a small radio show and i know that um that podcasts uh, are becoming very very much more popular like people use them um as background noise as a teaching aid. So really get out there and use those, that, that tool. Uh, it's relatively simple. Everyone can talk and everyone can tell a story. Um, white papers, again, if you've got, um, they help you build brand expertise. If you um, spend a time um, on, on some technical part of your business and you write it up as, as showing that you understand that technical side, that you can give that out again as a free download or some content that people can use. Um, video is king. Um, the, the the expression used to be content is king. Actually, I think now video is king. That um, the more video stories we tell, we engage with it, we absorb video um, really easily, and so. Um, the best thing is, and as I said, I'm seeing lots of ones in that sidebar. If you have a phone, you have a video production studio and a media empire. So just remember that, that, that every time you take a photo of good work you did, every time you um, take a smiling shot of the, the got up early and saw this amazing sunset before I did an install, and you put that up there, that you are now a, a publishing empire. And that those stories meet eyeballs and the more you engage with those stories the, the bigger audience you can grow and um, I always think that, that social media is like a relationship wrapped in a um, in a numbers game so if you can build your numbers while building that relationship then you're probably doing social fairly well testimonials get your your customers to tell stories about you infographics if you if you can show an inverter is more efficient than another inverter and you can build a little chart to show that that's something really useful that people um, get involved with and case studies um, again this is how we did an install this was the challenges that we met and this is the the, the end result and the client was thrilled by it um, Use a content calendar if you're doing all of this. Um, there's there's a few around that are very good. I really like Airtable as a tool. Um, Asana is another good planner um, calendar thing, or even just the Google Calendar, which is free, um, is a great way to just map out, okay, what are we going to do? We're going to do a post, we're going to do a picture, and we're going to do a story, and we're going to do one of those every week, and we're going to map that out. And then once you've mapped that out and you've filled, the, filled that, piece of content um you can get it up and get it out onto um to to facebook and and wherever but the best part of that is that you start planning ahead and you start to to see the stories that you're telling and how um how they they enga how people engage with them and it gives you time to plan and breathe that out so um yeah do that it's really a useful way to to get ahead plan your funnel all content starts with awareness that, that that's what that content's for but once you've bought, got that content push it somewhere push you if you're saying um here's a great sunset oh by the way you can see us at our website um that's the funnel so you start with something friendly or something that is engaging but you do that with the goal of pushing them to something more and moving them on to the next step now that might be gain a uh, email address get a um a contact make a connection download something free whatever it is that's a part of that funnel step um from there you want to have your 
um, and we've talked about this, optimise your website, make sure that um, it's usable, it's friendly, the landing pages tell the story that you want. Um, think about blogging, think about if you a writer, if you words are your thing rather than video, um, maybe you start telling a blog about your business and um, start building those communities. Uh, then once you've got that, um, you start building leads. So you've connected um, your uh, connected your customer as a lead. You're now actually telling them real stories, making real quotes, building out um, a genuine relationship until that lead becomes your customer and your customer then becomes a repeat customer or word of mouth. That, that customer is now telling your story for you. And so that's the real power of, of great service. Um, so we have a funnel. Um, this is a really practical thing. Um, there's a piece of code on Facebook. It's called the Facebook Pixel. Make sure that your web developer or you embed that piece of code inside your web page. Um, it's the thing that Facebook uses, and I know, um, I think, LinkedIn has one as well, that helps track customers. So it means that you can do what they call is remarketing. So your prospect will move to your um, website. Um, Facebook then knows that they went from Facebook to your website and then it will start feeding the advertising on the material that your customer might need about you back to them. So if you're putting a Facebook ad, then Facebook knows that your customer is interested in solar energy and is more likely to feed some of your ads through the algorithm into their um, stream. And so when that happens, and we all know and we all think that Facebook follows us, it's probably because it is, as does Google, as does most of the major platforms they use these tools in order to track um, customers to best deliver one the information they seem interested in and two to best deliver um, services that you want them to see so it's a win-win um, think about using personas build out what your perfect customer might look like get a sense of what they will what who they are and what they like and what interests them because when you build that persona then you know who you're talking to when you write your copy when you write your stories and you might have four or five different types of customer persona that you think about but at least then you know when you're targeting that that um, ad or that copy or that um, story that you're writing that you know who you're writing it for and you can have their face front and center in your mind and then you're writing it to them makes it a little more easy than just writing something you know who you're writing it for um use the facebook business ad manager um faith there's facebook and you can just put a post in and you can throw some money on it and they'll call it facebook will say booster post and they'll let you pick an audience and they'll put that out and you can get some good results from that but if you really really want to make facebook work for you and you're paying money for advertising the the business manager and the ad manager are where you need to go so you just type in facebook business manager and that's where you'll um start being onboarded onto all these tools and i'll show you there's a whole heap of um tools that they give you for example, um, when you're building out an ad, you can pick um, a whole heap of demographics and interests. For example, for me, for the, some of the ads that you might have seen that I've done on Facebook, um, uh, I pick master electrician, solar consultant, solar installer, electrician, solar cell, solar energy were the kind of things that they're interested in. And this is what Facebook's using to um, to tell um, to help me target my ads um, into you, and that. Um, you can then build their, them out as many different kind of audiences. Um, within the ad manager uh, or the business manager, you've got um, audience builders. You can create automation. There's a creative ha hub for all the different types of content, types of ads that you can do in Facebook. You can um, then get a whole heap of analyst, analytics and reporting on how your ads are performing what you can do to sharpen them and A-B test them. And, and really, there's a lot of um, background there that even if you're only spending a little bit of money, 
If you've got time on your hands, I really recommend you spend a little bit of time to get to know this back end because it will get you more results um, more effectively than just simply um, boosting a post. Facebook love it when you do it. They'll take your money every day. But they, if you want to sharpen how you spend that money, use the ad manager. Um, as you can see, you can target um, traffic or engagement. So you can set a goal. I want to target um, video views. So I put a video out there. Um, and I target it to video views, that means essentially Facebook knows that there are people within your audience who are more likely to spend time watching your ad. And so the algorithm will use that to, to focus those um, ads on people who are more likely to spend time watching those um, videos. And so as it learns your audience, um, it will actually then focus um, its attention to them. So it's, it's a, a way of making sure that the money you're spending on your advertising is actually going to people who need it, who want to see it, and uh, are spending time absorbing it. So, And that's a good way to cast a wide net with video. You can use video to get a big audience to watch something because lots of people will watch something of interest. And then you can then retarget that audience um, to something more specific. So you can build um, audiences out of behaviours as they watch your content. Um, use the data. There's lots of lots and lots and lots and lots of numbers in um, the back end of Facebook. Um, focus on the metrics that are important to you. Don't try and focus on everything. You'll never. You'll never. It'll drive you nuts. So pick pick a goal. I want to. I want to get more video views or I want to get more likes on, on my post and then work out that by exploring the data, doing maybe two versions of that ad, see which one gets the most likes and then once you've done that, dismiss one and then allow um, the likes to work on the ad that works for you. Um, so use the data. Uh, one last thing is should play. Yeah, there's a little video running. Um, campaign ad sets and data. A campaign is the big bucket that you use for your ads. Um, the next thing that, that you see will be um, ad sets. Ad sets are basically groups by age or groups by sex or groups by demographic or groups by location. So it's a, a way of targeting um, all the different sort of people that you might want to focus your ads on and then from there you create an ad. So from that ad you can then target the different demographics, the different um, uh, locations or the different numbers. It's a, it's just one of those things that when you first approach it, it's hard to get in your head what they mean. So I hope that quickly tells you what they mean. Um, as I said, use the goals, um, measure the goals that you want to set. So this is um, a survey that what marketers defined as success. So some people just want to see a return on investment. I put this much in, I got this much in sales. Some people really are going for brand and they want likes and they want relationship and they want the engagement. Um, other people want to share their content out so that the more often that people um, share or retweet and expand their, their audience by by making their content viral, um, that kind of thing is is their goal. So pick your goal and then try and work towards that goal when you're doing your social. Instagram. Instagram is Facebook's better-looking sister in that Facebook is very um, uh, pictured around posts. Um, Instagram's pictured around pictures. Um, but that doesn't mean that it's not very popular. It is... Um, Use your camera, use your phone to take stories, 
take photos. If you see something of interest, put it up. Use Instagram for that place. The other thing that Instagram is really strong on is Instagram stories. The other thing it's good at is that if you use Instagram as your visual um, tool, Instagram is owned by Facebook, which means that you can do the work once and share it to both platforms. So um, you can create an Instagram story, which is you can basically use that as a little graphic design tool to to put um, a photo and some text and some sounds or some links or it, it gives you a whole heap of tools. But once you use those tools, um, you can share that um, into your Instagram story. If you link that to your Facebook account, it will go there as well. So you can get twice the, twice the engagement um, for the same work. Uh, the other thing that Instagram has is a store. So the best part of that is that you can actually start tagging your products. Um, so you might have panels or you might have an inverter and you can actually tag those um, as products that you can sell from Instagram. So you can link it to your store. Um, the data comes up the uh, uh, price and product and you can actually use Instagram to start um marketing your products and services as if you were a, a store. So that's a really cool um, feature that's relatively new in the space. Um, it would be remiss of me, it would be remiss of me not to ask you to do one thing, which is to take that phone that I have been talking about and go to Facebook if you're on Facebook and follow us. So type in One Stop Warehouse as a little search and then like our page. It would be really wonderful if I saw a boost in our likes today from doing this. So please um, like our page and like us on LinkedIn if you're more um, want to chase down our professional messaging. Um, thank you very much. I'm not sure how long I spoke for. I didn't do a time, but hopefully I've given you some value on the Facebook space. Um, I'm going to take that off. Our next speaker. Um, thank you. Our next speaker is, is Colin Wang from Zenshine. Colin is going to, um, give us some information about what Zenshine has been doing um, with the COVID presentation. And he, oops, let me hit that button again. Um, he'll be giving us uh, some background. So some information about Colin. Colin um, is the VP um, for Australasia. He started in installation operational management in the solar industry. And previously he worked with Jinko Solar and Zenshine. He then returned back to Zenshine. And for the last five years, he's focused on helping um, bring Zenshine into the international marketplace. Um, he's been sharing his experience. Today he'll be sharing his experience of how Zenshine managed uh, is managed and is managing with COVID-19 um, in continuing to develop product and service for us. So, Colin, are you there? Yes, I'm, I am. Fantastic. <laughs> um, welcome, sir. I'm going to... Oops, switch me on. Um, give you the reins of the screen. So, please feel free to... Um, share the screen and show us your presentation and give us some great information. Thank you very much, Tim. Thank you very much for a kind uh, uh, introduction. Let me bring the presentation up. Can you see that? Yes, I can. So then if you hit the PowerPoint, it should rock and roll. Yeah. Is it, is it good? good? It's good. Great, great. Okay, um, thank you very much, Tim, for a kind of introduction, and uh, good afternoon to everyone, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first of all, of course, I would like to extend our appreciation to One Stop Warehouse marketing team, and team in particular, of course, for the opportunity to share with you guys today Zenshan's experiences in tackling and coping uh, with the sudden crisis of COVID-19 in China back in January. Back in January, um, 
just uh, before the Chinese New Year holiday starts uh, on the 24th of Jan for a week-long break, uh, Wuhan city um, became the epicenter of the coronavirus outbreak uh, and was locked down at very short notice. In China, factory was originally scheduled to open, um, reopen, let's say, on the last day of Jan, uh, but had to remain closed um, for a period of kind of indefinitive at the time, at least for 14 days, as nobody was clear and sure how long it would take for to contain the break. News came, came every day at that time, so a lot of uncertainties, a lot of anxieties. Um, and uh, on the 14th day of the extended closure, beyond the uh, holiday, uh, Zenshine uh, was lucky on the first list of the businesses in Changchou area, area uh, getting the government's permission to reopen. And uh, uh, so this gives us uh, a good opportunity uh, to start relatively early, but the uh, resumption of the production is a pretty slow recovery uh, and the process and uh, the adverse impacts um, on the production resumption actually lasts more than 14 days. Um, uh, as these impacts were still felt, are still felt by us today. Um, so um, these adverse impacts obviously flow to our customers um, so because most of our customers don't have that stock safety stock uh, expected to meet uh, the situations like this sudden and this uh, complete disruption of supplies for at least three weeks and effectively longer. Um, as Zenshine uh, alone has been affected uh, to deliver the products to our customers as originally scheduled in as much as 153 megawatts, uh, which um, is uh, impacting our customers. And uh, this kind of sudden imbalance between the ongoing demand on our customer side and the abrupt disru uh, disruption or shortage of the supply from uh, the manufacturers in China uh, has uh, created a lot of issues, not only on us, but to our customers in particular. Uh, so we try to get our customers alerted uh, and up updated uh, uh, as soon as possible and in order to, for them to get prepared early for what is to come. Uh, and also we try to ramp up or resume rather uh, our production and then ramp up uh, our capacity as much as we can, even at the extra cost uh, that we have to absorb in order to minimize the impact to our customers. Uh, these kind of challenges that Zenshan has been facing are unprecedented, like every other business is actually in China. Um, this much relates to the availability or rather unavailability of the uh, added workforce for the resumption of the production. It has much to do with whether the raw material is already on stock um, before uh, or built up, built up before uh, the closure for the holiday. Uh, or uh, let's say the resumption of the supplies by our raw material supplies uh, you know, immediately after the crisis or in, even at that time was pretty much in the middle of it. Just, uh, you know, uh, the, the curve had been flattened. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, very unprecedented situations where the cash flow is so much impacted. Um, so luckily, Zenshan has a, uh, let's say, about 80% of workforce uh, uh, actually are local residents. So this gives us a certain advantage to resume the production early. And the, since there was no confirmed cases in the local areas, so the government uh, feels more comfortable uh, for us to resume the, the act, business activities um, uh, at, at the relatively early stage. Um, then of course, uh, even if we started, uh, relatively early. Um, the production arrangements has faced constant ch changes, arrangement, rearrangement, re rearrangement, simply because of the unpredictability of the supply raw materials, uh, as well as what, whatever the, the supplies resuming the production uh, get committed to supply does not eventuate from time to time. 
Uh, and then, of course, the constraint uh, on the cash flow is another thing that uh, we have tried to do different things uh, uh, in order to get, uh, let's say, our uh, cash flow situation improved. Um, to basically, we the early assumption of the production really helps us in unlocking the funds originally uh, invested in materials inventory that we build up before the Chinese New Year. Um, that, that really helps, but of course, at the uh, same time, a lot of uh, let's say frustrations and uncertainties uh, because other uh, businesses, especially the financial uh, financing organizations, did not react with the supported measures as quickly, even though they came up uh, later on with support measures, which was was very much welcomed, and also because the uh, uh, credit chain, uh, you know, in a normal business situation, is broken, which means that a lot of uh, suppliers who were impacted actually or demanded by by this their vendors, material vendors, in turn, for the cash payment, uh, asked to do the hundred uh, percent payment, cash payment. With all these uh, challenges, uh, obviously, um, we the business has uh, been prepared kind of, uh, by ourselves early uh, and we basically established a, a special task force in the organization and headed by uh, the, the head of the Xinjiang group, the chairman. Uh, and uh, uh, there was early preparations even before uh, the production uh, resumption. Uh, with all the knowledge and understanding what might come, so basically assign uh, the or different uh, assignments of the things which are out of the normal business sphere, um, and then we also assign the persons to do the tasks um, in order to get uh, the ball rolling. Uh, in all that, um, actually, the time is of essence um, because uh, situation and news changes every day during that special uh, period of time, especially you know, uh, immediately. Uh, first two weeks of Feb. Uh, so uh, because of the attention uh, from the uh, top of the organization, uh, so we can, uh, quick decisions and actions can be made and taken uh, to address whatever the issues are coming up uh, and also uh, keep a very, uh, let's say, uh, quick uh, communication uh, with every stakeholders in our business, within and as well as outside our business. Now, cash flow uh, certainly uh, is one of the constraints uh, critical uh, that we have to face. As I just mentioned, that the early assumption of the production really assists unlocking the funding material stock. Um, and uh, uh, we actually also made a special uh, stock sales in order to turn the st uh, stocks into cash in, in, in to improve the liquidity. Uh, and to keep the new uh, the orders on hand uh, moving forward, um, and uh, we we try to uh, provide whatever assistance we can to the other stakeholders uh, in our supply chain. Uh, for one, for instance, transportation companies, we really help them to get the access for the roads in the local areas where we have already established our uh, let's say credentials um, uh, for taking very quick and uh, stringent uh, counteractions towards the spread of the virus. Uh, and uh, in some cases, we just consult with our customers to see if they will be able to help us uh, to, let's say, get, get some early payments in order to improve the uh, cash flow situation. Uh, the other thing, uh, as Tim has just mentioned, that uh, you know this kind of scenario uh, China has experienced and now we are experiencing in Australia today, uh, also, uh, let's say, change the way of, of our work. Um, we basically moved all uh, from the physical office to the virtual office, uh, which has put a lot of pressure on the uh, connectivity through internet. So our IT team uh, uh, has to stand by almost 24-7, you know, to make sure it works because uh, so many meetings uh, has been changed from physical to virtual uh, with the people working from home. Uh, telecom, video, you know, these are the tools that everybody has been, uh, let's say, familiar with, but uh, it has never been so much used uh, during that period of time. Uh, uh, 
you know, um, than the normal time. So, um, so basic automated office operation is in full swing. Uh, and uh, in addition to uh, the normal work, actually the workload during that period of time uh, has uh, also uh, reduced simply because of the situation in the country. Um, then we uh, use the time uh, available on hand to really uh, get, get to the Zhenshan uh, Online Academy running. Uh, we've got all the employees on board uh, with new product trainings, uh, with all the courses um, for developing their skills, uh, which uh, you know basically get all the teams paid for the uh, let's say for the resumption of the uh, production and in the new situation like we ha we are in today. Um, now, just a few words about uh, what we have uh, uh, done uh, during the resumption uh, or before the resumption of the production. Um, basically, uh, again, we planned early and uh, get all the organizations ready, including the gears, you know, the, the, the products and uh, protective gears, um, uh, you know, for the workers to use once uh, the production starts. Um, so, uh, and also the plans, what to do, and uh, training materials for the employees to disseminate it to any employees for them to educate themselves and get prepared and also the preventive practices uh, uh, that are, are mandatorily uh, implemented throughout the premises uh, against the uh, virus spread um, and uh, uh, we also put let's say the uh, employees work uh, compliance with these preventive uh, practices as part of their KPI uh, because this is um, a ongoing situation and we just can't uh, uh, get relaxed uh, not yet until it's finally over. Now, back in Australia, um, the data here is not updated to so on Monday's data, but I think today we are uh, in Australia, uh, I think we are about 5,900. Um, and uh, from the uh, curve, from trajectory, uh, that the uh, curve is flattened. Uh, but are we out of the woods yet? I don't think so. Uh, so I think it still takes a few days or a relatively uh, short period of time before we get a better picture. But globally, um, we're still pretty much in the middle of the crisis. Uh, so um, we have to stay vigilant uh, and uh, do whatever we can um, uh, in order to, uh, let's say, get the spread under control and minimize all the risk while still trying to, uh, let's say, maintain our business uh, to the best level as we would. Uh, and uh, so we, um, this is actually a small video. Uh, which you could find actually on One Stop Warehouse uh, website link uh, where uh, it shows the basics uh, of the routine, uh, which is actually a complete new routine that all the Zenshine employees are, are, are abiding by, are, com or are complying with, uh, when, you know, for the production uh, to continue uh, without disruptions. And uh, uh, so this is something you could uh, go to on uh, one stop warehouse uh, uh, website and 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 uh, you have a bit of time and you, you might find it a, a little bit of help. Uh, now before I go, I would actually just a, a few words about uh, who is Zenshine and what Zenshine is doing. Uh, Zenshine uh, is actually a manufacturer um, of 32 years uh, uh, history, and in terms of manufacturing experiences, um, Zenshine is the longest manufacturing history on all the solar manufacturers in China. Um, so the Zenshan had three business units. Um, we started from manufacturing modules, of course, but we moved on also to EPC projects in selected markets. And recently we have acquired a battery factory where uh, w w with their products and services, we can provide more thorough uh, solar uh, storage solutions um, to our customers worldwide. Uh, our manufacturing facilities, as you would have the chance maybe in future to see, uh, is fully automated. Um, and uh, our EPC projects has uh, very good edges, 
uh, in the markets that we have been present uh, in Japan, in Europe, uh, and uh, about uh, a year, 18 months ago, I think European Union has lifted this MIP restrictions, and now we have re we are reviving and have revived successfully um, the business that uh, was uh, impacted by the MIP restrictions early on. Um, Zenshan has also uh, wind uh, tender projects for, let's say, 15,000 villas rooftop systems in Dubai. Uh, this uh, actually shows uh, the uh, acceptance by our global clients actually for Zenshan panels, uh, particularly suitable for uh, the rooftop systems. And Zenshan produces actually a full range of solar modules with different technologies, uh, always staying uh, ahead of, uh, or staying in the um, uh, in the forerun uh, of the industry, and of course our products are, uh, are all uh, internationally certified with a leading uh, industry leading warranty. We provide a 15 years product warranty for rooftop systems in uh, Australia and 12 years for all other applications. Um, and uh, of course these products are globally certified, and we are a member of CEC. Uh, Council uh, and all our products in Australia ICT listed and approved. Uh, so we have teared, uh, teamed up with the One Stop Warehouse uh, in offering, uh, let's say, the uh, mainstream product. Uh, in this case, uh, 330 watt half cell mono perk technology used uh, in black frames. We always supply to Australian markets positive tolerance uh, modules of positive power tolerance which means that uh, it's always on the plus side. Uh, and uh, uh, these panels uh, are based uh, for the uh, rooftop systems uh, in Australia. And uh, if there, you, you are interested in, and you, you have any queries, you know, either you could come to uh, us or uh, go to, uh, let's say, One Stop Warehouse, who uh, are our best partners in Australia. And... Uh, uh, this is Zenshin, uh, Zenshine, um, and uh, Zenshine means in Australia, fair dink, and to be uh, very worthy. Uh, and this is the philosophy we are uh, we've been adhering to. Uh, and uh, um, in case there is anything that we could have, just feel free uh, to contact. Yes, uh, thank you very much for your time. I hope my time is uh, not too much protected, Tim. You were doing it at the Zenshine fact, Zenshine factory. Um, I thought that was um, you could just see how organised and how deliberate um, the company has been to keep um, staff safe. So I really appreciated seeing that. Thank you. Um, so I guess if you release the screen, that would be lovely. Perfect. Thank you, Colin. Um, our next step is to show a video from our platinum sponsor, Huawei. Um, so let me just organise that. Um, it's quite expansive, and I think it gives us a great um, understanding of the scope of um, solar globally. I can find it. Are oh, there?
Yeah, I just thought I went on a holiday after being locked in for so long. It was like we um, all got to go on a solar holiday across the planet to see all those amazing um, installations. So thank you for sharing that. That was awesome. Um, our next speaker is Brian Quinn from Ryzen. Um, And he um, is the sales manager for Ryzen Solar Technology. Brian is um, in charge of distribution and CNI in the CNI sectors. So, Brian, are you there? Hi, Tim. Um, great to see you um, or hear from you. Um, feel free to grab the screen and we'll go from there. So, if you want to share your screen, and I will hear your presentation. Okay. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian. I'm from Ryzen Energy Australia. And today I'm going to share some strategies of Ryzen uh, when it comes to the COVID-19 situation and some recommendation from Ryzen. So for those who don't know us well, here's some overview of our company. We are a global top five tier one brand, according to the Bloomberg, Bloomberg manufacturer list. And our current capacity is 11.1 gigawatt. And for last year, we've been ranked the third largest importer of solar panel for Australian market. And we are also very active in utility side. 
uh, we have over 400 megawatt solar panels installed in Australian solar farms, including two of our own farms, Meridian Solar Farm and Yarlin Solar Farm. And we have office in Melbourne and Brisbane. Melbourne is our management team and also a sales team. Brisbane is our project team as well as our uh, EPC team. In total, we have over 40 local staff in Australia. And here's some photo of our Queensland solar farm, Yarn Lee. And now this farm is already grid connected and it is supporting the over 40,000 families in Queensland about their daily demand for electricity. And this is our second farm, Meridian Solar Farm in Western Australia. And we complete the physical construction of it last Christmas period. And now it's waiting for the grid connection to happen. So this is some uh, actions we take and how the COVID-19 has changed our uh, operations. So uh, uh, Colin and uh, Stephen, they share more about factory side and because I'm based in Melbourne, so I will share more about what we did in Australia. And company wide now we encourage all, all of our Australian staff to work from home until further notice. And we, our headquarters shipped a manifest mask for us and we disseminate to our staff, or to of our office, our sites, and our uh, key customers. And also we follow the social distancing of the government by minimizing face-to-face -face gathering and meetings. If there is a physical meeting has to happen, we will uh, arrange it in different time. So we minimize the attendance to our office. And also we actively review our current OHNS policies and we try to see if there's any procedure we can improve for hygiene perspective. And here's some proactive actions we are taking now about the situation. So we keep our communication channel open with our, our, our customers and our business is going as much as we can now. And also, we're improving our documentation data sheets and sales kits now for better applied to uh, better use and uh, assist our customer. And also we are investigating more on online means of sales and meetings. And that include, we try to improve our website and to improve the experience when you use it. And also we are now uh, exploring the op op uh, online options for sales and marketing. Like we try to load more contents on our uh, Facebook and LinkedIn. And also we try to investigate more on uh, content marketing opportunities. And also during this period, we are conducting more internal trainings for our staff to know what's coming next regarding our new uh, PV technology and make sure everyone know about the benefit of it. And also we are taking this time to improve our customer service by sending out questionnaires, customer service. So we are focusing on the different touch point of our uh, service, like uh, the pre-sales, after sales, and warranty claim process, so we can improve for future. And also we are trying to improve our work efficiency ourselves. So before we do many things manually, and now we try to look into uh, online platform or some uh, softwares to upgrade and make us more advanced. And here are some recommendations from Ryzen to your side. The, the first point, uh, first advice will be try to keep your communication open, channel open with your customers. So you will give your customer confidence and let them know that you are always ready for their inquiries and queries. And also I think it's a good time for uh, think about co-marketing co with suppliers like Ryzen. Uh, we are always happy and willing to look into projects with where you use Ryzen panels. Then we can uh, customize and offer some marketing support to you to increase your uh, exposure because we have a very good marketing setup and budget for, for our own solar farms. So let's make, it, make, it, make use of it together now. And also I would suggest we be more active in solar community. Now you've got slightly more time to attend more uh, CC and SEC event, event. 
and also listen to more online webinars like today. And also I think it's good to know and look into the needs of the local community. For this part, what Ryzen did is uh, like the two photos below. Uh, during the bushfire period, we jointly partner with, uh, we partner with uh, Tesla and 5B, and we jointly donate a system to a fire station in New South Wales. And also, we being cooperate with uh, Beyond Zero Emission, which is a not-for-profit not, not group dealing with the environment change. And we also offer support and donation to Beyond Blue, which is an organization to help uh, people suffering mental illness. And I think that's also very important for this special moment. And lastly, I think uh, good to know more about your brands now. Like, if you look at Ryzen, we are quite a localized company with local support, and we've been active with utility side, and we investment heavily in Australia with the long-term plan to become leading supplier in Australia. And also, I think it's a good time for you to know more about PV technology, especially for recent years. The PV technology is upgrading and uh, evolving very fast. So if you know more about them, that will be helpful for you and your staff to be more equipped with your uh, skills. And uh, here's the last page to wrap up my talk today. And regarding the uh, stock levels, we have a good level of stock in One Star Warehouse for April. And uh, as uh, Colin mentioned, all the Chinese factory are recovering now. And our next batch of factory for April, April uh, sorry, for May is already on the way. So there's no major gap for our service. And there are three more new products we'll bring to Australian market. And uh, the first one of them will be 166 millimeter cell panels. And uh, it will be available by Q3. And uh, with that, we will have uh, our uh, residential products to upgrade from 330 to 365 to 370 watt. And the second product we gonna launch by Q2 or Q3 will be HJT panels. And that's a premium N-type resin panels to assist you. And with HJT, it will have minimum uh, degradation and LID effect. And also, the HJT will uh, will have uh, will work better in the extreme weather, like like cold and hot temperature, and give you uh, overall a lower cost per kilowatt hour. And lastly, we will launch the 210 millimeter cell panel, and uh, when we have that our big panel will reach 500 watt. And that's very exciting news for our commercial and the utility customers. So that is about my talk today. Thank you very much. And uh, you can find my email at the bottom. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, bro. Thank you very much. Um, I really took note of um, the fact that you guys were helping Beyond Blue. I thought that was actually a really um, a sensitive thing to be doing at this time because I, I know that um, people are going to start um, feeling a little bit more shut in, a bit more closed in. So um, to support an organisation like that is really, really a good thing. So thank you. Yeah, we already did that from before. So, yeah, we try yes. to continue that. No, I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, it is my great pleasure now to introduce my friend, Andy Foote. Andy um, and I met each other over something very much like a Zoom webinar um, a few years ago using a platform that um, really connected a lot of people around the world into this space, into this experience. So um, it's it's interesting that uh, that platform is now... Um, almost the world is embracing it globally as a way of connecting. So, um, and certainly Zoom is a way of doing that. So I would like to welcome Andy. I'll give you a little bio of him first. Um, 
Andy is a LinkedIn coach and content strategist. He's helped thousands of professionals leverage the LinkedIn platform. Um, his insight dot com blog has been read by over four million people and i know that if you google just about anything about linkedin you'll see andy's articles and his face appear um andy specializes in advanced linkedin strategies and he has an encompassing network um so i welcome him hi andy um feel hello, free to hello, grab the hello. screen Okay, let me grab the screen. Oh, I've got the screen, so I'm live. Can you see me? Um, hang on. Let, I think perhaps if Didi swaps the pin over, unpin me. There you go, and you're in, yes. You can see me? Hello. We can Hello. see you, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Tim. Thank you to One Stop Warehouse for this opportunity to present. My background is law, recruitment, and teaching. For the past nine years, I've been focused on helping professionals with their brand and networking strategy on LinkedIn. Uh, I'm a Brit, as you can probably tell, but I'm based in Chicago, uh, and the time here is 11.41 in the p.m. So it'll be, it'll be uh, midnight probably by the time um, I finish my presentation. Um, TechCrunch uh, recently wrote, like many other websites at the moment, the career-oriented networking platform LinkedIn has seen a big boost in traffic as a result of people being asked to work home and stay indoors overall to slow the spread of the coronavirus, with a bump of 55% more conversational activity between existing connections in recent weeks. Um, so my take is now's the perfect time to leverage LinkedIn with more people stuck at home than usual. They're not going out. They're not doing the usual in-person social stuff. They're paying attention to messages, notifications, they're job hunting, they're prospecting, they're building their business. And you can, of course, do all of this uh, perfectly well virtually. It's actually an ideal time. I think, to strengthen your existing professional network and to expand it. So I'm going to show you how to use LinkedIn as part of your marketing and sales strategy, and I'm going to focus particularly on maximizing your time and effort on the platform. With that, I'm going to share my screen. And I'm going to go into my presentation. And I'm hoping everyone can, can see that. Can everyone see that, Tim? Can you see that, Tim? Handy, we can see it. Excellent. Thank you very much. All right. So LinkedIn, connecting during a crisis. All right. So I'm going to focus on the, the basics. Just to make sure that everyone is, is doing this, um, I would say, properly, um, correctly. Um, you've got to ensure that you're, you're presenting as, as strongly as powerfully as possible and frankly not making silly mistakes and this starts with your headshot right so your headshot uh, is just you in that circle and that's my example here on the left it's it's um it's no one else in that shot but you so it's not your kids it's not your pet and it's not a celebrity it's just you use the full circle as much as you can in terms of space because that circle is actually in three different sizes. Um, it's, it's, it's large, medium, small. Small is very small, as you've probably noticed. So maximize that circle. Try and squeeze your face into that. Uh, use that you know, circle by, by 70 to 80% if you can. Um, my background is black because I want people to focus just on me. I don't want them to be distracted. 
So I, I like black, obviously, but wh a white background would also work. But just try and eliminate any distractions from the circle, just your face. So it's just you. Is it current, right? Um, a big mistake that a lot of people make is they stay with a, a, a headshot that they really, really like. One problem, it's probably not you. It's not current. Um, if, if you were the test, the litmus test is if you go into a meeting, would they recognize you from your LinkedIn headshot? If they don't, that's an issue because it's, it's, it's hard to overcome that, that, um, that fraud, right? You're faking it. You, it's it's got to be you and it can't be you 10, 20 years ago. Um, I certainly had a much younger, much thinner looking version of me uh, many years ago and I had that for a long time and I clung to it because I absolutely loved the headshot. But I was, you know, as I was meeting with people, I, I knew that I had to be, I had to be authentic, I had to be real and I had to be current. Is it professional? You know, a lot of this advice is subjective. You take a view on what's professional. I would put it to you that the shot that I'm using right now is professional. Um, you know, I'm smiling. My eyes are, uh, it's called something called squinching. You can look that up. S-Q-U-I-N-C-H-I-N-G, squinching. It's a technique where instead of having your eye wide open, you're narrowing them slightly. And uh, supposedly the science is people think you look smarter because you're, you're squinching your eyes. It's a thing. It's a thing that portrait uh, photographers uh, use all the time, a hack. The headline. Now, you can do one of two things with the headline. You can use it to sell yourself, um, in other words, as a slogan. And I've given you three slogans there as an example. I save you money with solar. I'm the solar energy guy. I cut your energy bill by, by 80%. Or you just can go with the default function where it'll give you a current job title. It's entirely up to you which of these you do. But I can tell you that if you use the slogan, if you manage to come up with a creative slogan, a unique slogan, then it's certainly more memorable than Solar Energy Advisor. All right, so if you can do it, if you can pull it off, then more power to you. I'd encourage you to do that, but you know, it's not the end of the world if you just stick with your default job description. All right, so why am I focused on the headshot and the headline? Well, these together are part of your calling card, right? So when you look at others, when you comment on LinkedIn, when you, when you like content or you react to it with, um, with, with, um, with one of the reactions, when you are searched on LinkedIn, there are only three aspects, three elements that other people will see whenever you are in the public commons of LinkedIn. And they are the headshot, the name, and the headline. Now it's crucial that all three of these are working for you, right? And they certainly cannot be hurting you. You've got to make sure you're not, that they're not harming you in any way. And so the two, the two biggies, of course, you can do something about are your headshot and your, and your headline. There you can see mine. Uh, you know, think about how your how your calling card is presenting to you is presenting you to other people, and of course, the objective at the end of the day is to get people to actually click on that calling card, right? So that's why the slogan, a memorable slogan, or a slogan that that piques curiosity, that um, actually, I don't know, in terms of timing, the person might be thinking, you know what, I do need, I do need to speak someone about my LinkedIn brand. I do need to some, speak to someone about, about um, uh, energy and, and, and solar. Maybe, maybe this person's my guy. So it, it, it can do a lot of work for you if you get it right. But that's the first thing that they see. And the goal is always to get them to click on your profile where they then take further action. They get a chance to uh, you know, review you in, in your entirety. They will go through your entire profile and they'll research you. They'll do their due diligence on you, but you've got to get them to click. If you don't get them, get them to click, then, you know, you're in essence, you're, you're, you're not going to seal the deal and you'll, you'll, you'll find it hard to get business on LinkedIn. 
the about section is um, is a very important section when people are doing that due diligence on you because it's above the fold. What do I mean by above the fold? It's it's the it's as far as people are willing to scroll um, in a short period of time. So if they've only if they're only going to spend ten to fifteen seconds on finding out as much about you as possible, then the about section is where they're going to get that info in, in that short period of time. So I've given you three examples here. Um, the, the, the about section doesn't have to be a long and, and comprehensive um, story about you and what you're all about. Um, but try and give them as much information as you can and you know, make, it, make it look professional, make it, make it look um, uh, targeted, on point. And so I've given you these three examples, um, which of course you know you'll you you'll get as part of the uh, as part of the the slide um, slides slide uh, sharing. Now, if you if you're really stuck with what to put in your about section, then you could do a, a couple of things. You could certainly look at the text on your website and pull stuff from there, right? Um, or you could look at other people in your space. That, are, that have already done an about section and take you know, cues, take ideas from what they've written about themselves and, 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 and borrow it, right? Nothing wrong, nothing wrong with that. The, the, I think the worst thing you can do is, is not have anything in your about section at all because that obviously sends a message that, well, why would I hire this person, right? Why would I call this person if they can't be bothered to fill out their about section. So it says something about you uh, by, by not doing anything at all. So, so don't make that mistake. Um, always, always add your contact details at the end of the, the about section. It used to be called a, a summary, by the way, but LinkedIn is now calling, calling it the about section. Add it at the end of the about section. So you're making it as easy as possible to get in touch with you, right? So give them that work email, give them the work mobile, and and you know, ideally with a call to action, uh, by which I mean, um, you know, if you're if you're looking for X, then I'm your guy. I can help you with this, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I'll, I'll come to that in a moment. Um, and then, in, in line with what I was saying about with the about section, go ahead and spend you know 20 to 30 minutes filling out all of the other main profile sections. All right. So definitely your experience. I think I think people like to see how people have progressed in their career, where they started out. I think that's always always interesting. Um, so fill out the experience section. This is LinkedIn is essentially your online prospectus, but it's also your online resume. All right. So fill out the experience section. Give them that information. Fill out the education section as well. Put that in. It's not going to take you long. And then also add skills. You've got 50 skill slots to fill. You don't have to fill all 50. Again, use the peer review method to look at other people in your function, in your space. Look at what skills they're using. Just use the exact same skills if they're relevant. And then recommendations. Recommendations can be incredibly powerful uh, depending on who they're from. Right? If they're from credible, senior, heavyweight people that are recommending you, then that's going to stick out. Could well be the difference in you getting the project, you getting the deal, right? them hiring you rather than someone else because you had those, those, those impressive recommendations. All right, so the social opportunity. I think now in particular, your, your strategy right, should be uh, based on three things, reconnect, engage, and connect. Now, note that I'm saying engage and then connect. I'm not saying connect and engage. I'll come to that in a, in a, in a short while. So by reconnect, I mean this is a, a wonderful opportunity to go back to your network, perhaps your neglected network, right, people that you haven't been in touch with for a, quite a long time, purely because you've been busy, right, we're all busy, and an example I give is, hey, Bill, I was thinking about you the other day, reaching out to make sure you and your loved ones are healthy and are doing okay during this totally crazy pandemic time. How are you and yours holding up? So that's just a, uh, an example uh, of a message that you could send out. But it's a great way to say, look, you know, I'm not selling. I'm just touching base. 
and I'm just, you know, making sure that, that everything's okay. And if Bill is responsive, he'll say, yeah, thanks, Andy. Appreciate that. Uh, we're, we're doing okay. And that's a conversation. Uh, so you're not selling, you're just reaching out and you're just reconnecting. Um, and then there's, there's connecting. Connecting is fundamentally on LinkedIn. It's fundamentally done in three different ways. You can do it with groups. You can do it via content. And you can, of course, search on specific, uh, specific functions. And I'm, you know, I've given you uh, some, some, you know, some, some sample searches there, for example, building owner, facility manager, head of sustainability. You will know better than me right, who to search for, who the decision makers are in your industry. I'm guessing those three uh, might be relevant. Um, content, you know, I'm giving you uh, two examples there, um, and I'll, I'll, I'll speak more about hashtags in a, in, a, in a moment. But for example, the Sydney hashtag has almost 400,000 followers, right? The Solar hashtag, 32,000. Um, Turning to groups, so groups, I think, still have a bad rep on LinkedIn, and, and I think rightly so, uh, LinkedIn management really don't know what to do with them. They, they haven't known what to do with them for quite some time, frankly, and a lot of group managers have thrown in the towel, and so you may think of groups, LinkedIn groups, as spammy and, you know, full of promotional content. Well, that's, that's gradually changing. Um, a few months ago, LinkedIn actually gave control over content within groups back to managers, which means that they can now uh, control exactly, you know, specifically which content group members see. So that's a huge change, and it should mean that gradually you'll start to see better content within groups depending, of course, on whether the group manager has not checked out altogether. Um, that's also happened. So it's a question of finding groups that are well-managed, where you know, there's, there's good content still, and, and, and you, can, you, know, you can search on, 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 on the, the, the fantastic search box, and you can search on groups, and I've given you two examples there, and there are over two million uh, um, LinkedIn groups, so plenty to choose from, but you have to do the legwork. You have to try and find the communities, find the, the great conversations to be had in groups. Now, once you, once you find the group and you join the group, uh, or actually, once you find the group, you've got to be patient because not all group managers are going to be quick on the turnaround to accept you. So you're going to have to be patient if you, if you join a bunch of groups. Um, some will accept you straight away, some may take weeks. But you can join up to 100 groups, which is interesting, isn't it? Because you've got potentially a choice of joining 100 databases, right? So why wouldn't you make full use of joining all of those databases? I'm not asking you to be present in all 100, but I'm saying choose a handful where you are going to be present, where you are going to be active, where you're going to add value by engaging with other group members in the public space of those groups on discussions. So, you know, be helpful, be courteous, and then that gives you a great way or a great reason to connect. So Helen's noticed you in a particular group. She's noticed that you've liked her comment. You may have engaged. You may have just uh, added a, a comment on one of her discussions. And then it's a perfect opportunity for you, for you to send that connection message. Hey, Helen, we're both members of Sydney uh, Network. On that basis, I'm hoping to connect and provide you with access to my network. And that's important because you're not reaching out just to connect, you're saying specifically why, right? There's a very good basis for doing that. She might think, hmm, that makes sense. Uh, I do know Andy, or, uh, you know, I recognize the name. And yes, we're both a member of this, this group. Um, oh, he's offering me access to, my net, to his network. So, you know, you're making her aware that it's a two-way thing here, right? Engage and connect uh, around content. Content, um, in a way, has become um, the new group experience on LinkedIn. What do I mean by that? Well, there is a lot of coalescing around content, particularly if you may you may have noticed this around posts. 
right? Posts are basically like, like newspapers, right? They get a lot of attention, a lot of engagement uh, over a short period of time, and then they're quickly, they're quickly covered by the next newspaper, by the next post. So they, they, they gradually disappear. But during the time when they, they, they burn, uh, when they, they, they really burn brightly, some of these, these posts, it's a great opportunity for you to dive in and to respond to those com around those conversations created by the content. But you want to avoid just the one word responses. And frankly, you know, just liking um, a, a post is not gonna get you that visibility, right? So just saying great, is not is not going to do you much good. However, if you're willing to spend some time putting together a thoughtful comment where you share your experience, your point of view, um, and always be courteous, always be helpful, always be supportive, then people are going to uh, take notice of that. So it's a tremendous opportunity to actually you know commune with other people around content. And I've given you you know some three examples of uh, the kind of thing that I would say. That's a great point, Steve. What's your opinion on X? I understand this has become more popular recently. You know, you can make it all about industry and 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 relevant to to what you're interested in. Um, curious to know more about this. Do you have any sources or pointers, Phil? So you, you'll notice that both of those first two are question marks, right? So I'm trying to get a dialogue with Steve. I'm trying to get a dialogue with Phil. Okay, that's where the one and the one liners, or rather the one word responses they don't do you much good but if you're getting a dialogue going then suddenly phil is not that much of a stranger steve less of a stranger okay so think about conversing around making a, a real effort conversing dialoguing around content and i'll give you an example uh, there from from ori where she's commenting on a webinar that i did recently and she's you know she's She's making herself known, but she's also being uh, thankful. Uh, so super, super comment from, from Laurie. All right, so how do you go about finding content? Well, hashtags um, have come back to LinkedIn with a vengeance. They, 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 they piloted hashtags some years ago, uh, four or five years ago, didn't do anything. Now they've brought them back, and they brought them back in a big way. Um, you can see by the amount of followers on some of these relevant hashtags that there's clearly a lot of interest. Now, followers doesn't necessarily mean right that there are 13 million people who are all coalescing around sustainability. That's not true. What it means is at some stage people have said, yeah, that's the subject I'm interested in. But they are a great way to signpost content, relevant content for you guys and gals. Right, so I, I've, I've found 14 as an example for you where all you need to do to find those conversations, to find out you know, where the content flow is, is to follow those and start clicking on uh, those to find content, to start engaging, to start building your network and to, to build your followership, but build your profile. All right, searching. Um, you know, whenever you're searching someone, you've, you've got a prospect, you've ta you're targeting someone, obviously do your homework, right? The more homework you do, the better your connection message because you'll have the, you'll have the, the intel to, to, to make a, a very, very uh, good um, outreach. So look for commonalities as well. I gave the group example earlier. And be very precise in your connection message. You know, you don't get much space anyway. You get, you get 300 uh, characters to say what you need to say in the connection request. Um, so there I've given you three examples. You know, we've got, we've got these three people in common. Oh, really? Well, that's interesting. That tells that person, right, that you're running in the same circles. So you're not a complete stranger. And if Steve, Pamela, and Phil have connected with Andy, maybe, you know, Jan will think, oh, he's, he's safe to connect with them, right? That, that, might, that might be a beneficial to me going, going forward. Um, and then with, with Bill, you know, Bill is the, the, the fawning one. You know, you've been complimentary. Uh, I've been following you for a while. Always enjoy your content. And so, you know, it's... it's, it's that's another, that's another good way of um, 
getting someone to accept your connection request. Hi, Simon. I'm building my network, looking to connect with people who share similar interests to me. Now, Simon might call you on and say, well, yeah, what are those similar interests? So you might have to be specific, okay? I've been building my network and looking to connect with people in X or who do this, like me. And therefore, I'd love to connect, provide you with direct access to my, my LinkedIn network. Again, it's a two-way street. You're giving something. You're not just connecting for the, for the, for the heck of it. And then in that message that I'm actually uh, that I'm actually typed in the screenshot for you, watch out for for mistakes, right? Don't make any mistakes. I made one. If you can see it, it's with similar interests. All right, not interest. Double check, proof proofread all of your all of your typing. All right. So leveraging LinkedIn, how are you? What are the hacks? What are the what are the cool what are the cool things that you could be doing and indeed you know should be doing uh, most sales people I know uh, will be very familiar with the activity section right before you meet anyone before you meet anyone in person before you meet anyone um, online and you're trying to achieve something trying to achieve some kind of breakthrough you need 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 to check their activity section. Now, if you're lucky and they're moderately active on LinkedIn, they have a ton of useful intel on Ed, right? On the people that you're targeting. Um, if if they're not active on LinkedIn, then all right, not so not so helpful. But increasingly, right, a lot of people are spending a lot of time on LinkedIn and they're doing stuff. All that stuff's captured in the activity section. Uh, you should mine it, research it for all it's worth, and then you'll have a plan of attack on how you approach Ed because you'll know you'll be more informed than your competitor about what Ed commenting on, what he's actually sticking his head above the parapet on, on LinkedIn. Very, very useful uh, technique. Do that if you're not already doing it. Um, and Ed won't be that surprised either if you have to mention something where he just posted, right, the, the day before the meeting, he'll go, hmm, that's smart. Andy's done his research. He won't be freaked out about, out about it. He may even expect it, okay? Use browsebacks. What do I mean by browsebacks? So if you're interested in, in, in Ed and perhaps you haven't had any activity at all, uh, any relationship building with him, you haven't joined a group, um, you're, he's, he's, he's a bit of a mystery. Um, I would, I would click on his profile and by doing so, and, and when you do that, obviously make sure that you're fully identified, right? You're not in private mode. So you click on his profile and then you wait. If Ed buzzes you back, he's opened the door, right? Because he's at the very least, he is aware of you, right? So now you can have that conversation. Because he can't, he can't very well say, oh, I don't know who Andy is. Of course he is. Of course he does. He, he knows a little bit about me because he looked at my profile. So the door is open. It's up to you to send that precise message. Why are you looking at him? All right? Follow up. So it's, you're qualifying. What you're doing there is qualifying. Um, his interest. And it's not stalking. Everyone does this. All right? So you should have no qualms whatsoever about doing that if you're, if you're in sales mode relationship building mode um, you can right now um, you, you should be if you don't have premium you should you should get it you should get the trial you should get the free month trial of LinkedIn premium I encourage all of my clients to have premium for one main reason and that is so they can get the full three months history of LinkedIn browsers right so all know I will have 90 days of profile browsing history, all of the people that have browsed me, fully identified, not in private mode, I will be able to see them, right? I cannot do anything with these people unless I know who they are. So if they're walking in my, into my store and I don't see them, they're invisible, I can't sell anything to them. So that's why I would, that's why I would always, always buy premium. Premium um, in, 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 in the US, I think is 30 bucks a month. I'm not sure what it is in, in, in Australia and other places. So, but get that free month at, at least and use that now while you can. Uh, it's it's great time to do this corona, uh, during the coronavirus. 
uh, you can message many premium members for free. All right, um, try it. You may be surprised. What a lot of people don't realize about premium members is they have an option called open profile, where essentially it's an open door policy. It means that anyone can send a message, an email to them for free, and they'll accept it, and there's no cost to you. So if you if you see a member, they've got that gold uh, premium icon on their profile, send them an email. Guess what? It might be free. You don't even have to uh, send a connection request. Just send them that message, that email. This is brand new. You can now send unlimited messages to any group member. Brand new. This has just changed. LinkedIn's changed the policy uh, just a few days ago. It used to be limited to 15 per month, right? You could only send a fellow group member a maximum of 15 messages. Not the same member, ideally, right? But any member that you share a group with, you could send up to 15. Now they've taken that throttle off. It's unlimited messages to any group member, which obviously means, you know, yeah, join 100 uh, databases, send as many messages as you want, but targeted, concise, make every message count. Look, if you're not, in the, if you're not uh, into creating content, right, you don't have to. Right? If you don't want to create posts, if you don't want to write articles, I get it. It takes a lot of bandwidth, not for everyone, but you can curate content. Nothing at all to stop you from sharing other people's content right uh, and you just do that by clicking at the bottom click the share and that's a nice thing to do right you're trying to get on someone's radar share, curate their content now if you can't meet obviously use zoom everyone's video conferencing now um and zoom is, is super easy i think um as hopefully we've demonstrated thanks very much and I've, i'll obviously be very happy to answer your, your questions Hi Andy, um, we have one question that came through. Can you tag your own articles? Can you tag your own published articles? Um, by tag, you mean mention? Maybe hashtag them so they come up in search. Hashtag your own, yeah, I mean, you, you, you can, you can and as a, you know, as a as a um, as a uh, strategy, I add three hashtags, only a maximum of three hashtags, because LinkedIn have advised that only three are are necessary. Um, they've kind of implied that if you do more than three, they get ignored. So the habit that I've gone into gotten into is having three hashtags. One will be my own. So Andy does LinkedIn. And then the other two will be relevant to the content. So it'll be content marketing. It'll be LinkedIn tips. So by all means, yeah, you can hashtag your own content and you can do that for both articles and posts. And what you're doing there is, you know, ideally you're, you're going into the feed where other people who are looking for, for you know, uh, content via those signposted hashtags, they'll find yours too. So that's why you would, why you would hashtag your own. Now I'm going to ask one more question of you. Um, of um, LinkedIn, I know is very business to business in terms of I work, you work. That's how we we kind of connect. A lot of our um, our customers here are going to be focusing on business to consumer, but every business person on LinkedIn is a consumer. How do you how do you change the story so that those people who are in business mode are actually in buying mode? Well, that's a great question. So I think it goes back to, I think it goes back to content. I think it has to be, it has to be hitting them at the right time, but it has to be answering their questions. And if, if you can share, um, if you can share content which answers their questions or gets them thinking um, more about purchasing or pulling the trigger, then you know that's that's clearly the way the way to do it. Um, I think a lot of social sellers are now um, 
teaching that you have to just engage, engage, and give, and give, give, give as much information, as much help as possible, and let them, you know, let them get a sense of what you're about, build that relationship, and then you would hit them with the, okay, we've got a, we've got a presentation, you know, we'd love for you to, you know, to, to read this, or, you know, can we send you a white paper, or, you know, is, is now the right time, can I have, you know, our sales guy reach out to you, or you know when when will you making well when, when will you be making a decision on this? So I think it's about content. I think it's it's about building your brand, building your profile. But the the biggest mistake I see, Tim, is when people reach out um, to to me, uh, for example, and they 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 connect, and then their first message is the pitch, mm. right? And that's that's a classic mistake. And it, and to them, it's a numbers game. Right, they don't care if they if they if they you know if they 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 pee me off because they're thinking that out of a hundred this will probably work for one or two. That's all I need, right? But I think the smart way is instead of just trying to get a tiny proportion, make every message count, every outreach count, but lead with your best material and do your do your research. Understand that you know when is the right time to contact that 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 prospect. Mm. Um, yeah, it's not always easy to get the timing right. And I know there's one other space that I don't think you mentioned that I find really useful on LinkedIn is the long format um, editor that you can actually write good blog post articles and have them appear in LinkedIn. So often we think posts, but if, if you've got a, a, a story to tell that, that has some depth and has some imagery to it, then you can certainly use the long format um, storytelling that is embedded in the um, LinkedIn yeah, um, space. Absolutely. absolutely. Because there's, um, you know, I refer to posts as being the newspaper, but certainly articles are still, you know, the, the, the magazine and can be very, you know, very... Um, uh, attractive in terms of, of 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 the information you present there. Incredibly easy to put together. All right, LinkedIn have taken all the obstacles out of publishing, all of the obstacles in in publishing out of the way, made it super easy. And you know, a friend of mine swears that he still gets business from an article he wrote three years ago. Yeah. So because there's that evergreen content that you can put in evergreen there. Evergreen content is indexed by Google, and you know he's getting he's getting that good stuff as well. So. Yeah, do both. Don't neglect articles for sure. Uh, posts and video. You mentioned video. You know, LinkedIn, LinkedIn have, have enabled you to do a native mm. video for many years, and now they're experimenting with live video. And you know, a select bunch have that. If you're lucky enough to do that, then you know, make sure you got you you got your stuff together and you and you're practiced and you're professional. Fantastic. Um, Andy, I'm going to um, bring in the other Andy. Um, he's going to do a sign-off. We might just have leave um, open um, some time for some Q&A um, at the end as well. But uh, thank you so much for helping us develop our profiles. Thank you for helping us think about how we can use LinkedIn to really sharpen our story personally, but um, also to be able to use that to reach out to a whole customer base and a whole industry based. Um, and that's the, the great value that LinkedIn gives us as a tool. So thank you for that. It was my pleasure, Tim. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm going to steal the screen. I don't know how we unpin you. Okay, um, our last um, and by no means least um, person to speak is Andy Cheng from One Stop Warehouse. So, Andy, um, thank you for um, giving us a chance to, to hear from you. Thanks, Tim. Thank you, thank you for everyone attending our first webinar. Uh, it was a great pleasure to have over 130 people uh, with us today. And it's also a great pleasure to have the LinkedIn specialist here with us. Um, just two minutes from me, uh, a few messages from One Stop. Firstly, we are, we are open and we are applying social distancing rule in every single office and warehouse. 
Um, a few things we did for solar industry. Um, firstly, we hiring people, and we did um, we did some hedging for the for the Australian um, Aussie dollar recently. So we are trying to minimize the price increase. We understand the the job um, is over twenty five percent for Aussie dollar, but uh, um, we did some hedge well. Thirdly, we are very diversified, you know, from product brand and um, manufacturing uh, locations. So we have strong and stable, secure supply chain. Um, we still have plenty of, uh, for example, Huawei five kilowatt hybrid inverters and commercial inverters, 29.9, 50 kilowatt. And we have plenty of um, Ryzen's Zenshine 330, uh, the most popular panel in the market. Um, both have uh, have 15 years product warranty. Also, we trying to have the no touch um, business. So we offer direct deliveries, um, and everyone is knowing we're doing a few exciting new digital projects. Um, so this webinar is one of them, and we have another one coming next Friday. Um, everyone's different. Next topic is marketing solar with new perspective. So um, thank you. Um, thanks for being with us um, and our pass to the team. Thanks, Andy. Really appreciate you um, closing off for us. Um, I'd just like to thank everyone as well. Thank you for um, spending time with us, um, hearing our story and sharing um, the industry story. We really hope that this webinar series is just a time for us to be supportive of us and each other as an industry to be able to give us tools and to equip um, and help each other as we um, as we all go through this together. Um, so I thank you, especially if you're a, if you're a guy out there um, putting up panels on roofs for every roof you climb, for every panel you haul up, for every inverter you store. I just thank you for going through those hard yards. Um, yeah, and just thank you for for keeping this industry going. Um, if there's any questions, I don't know if there are any questions um, that specifically we have for anybody. Um, maybe Didi has highlighted some of those somewhere. If not, um, I think we might call it a day. And just thank you, everybody, for spending your time with us. Um, remember that next week... Um, We've got, um, we've got these. We've got uh, Friday the seventeenth of April. We've got marketing with new perspective. Um, Friday the twenty fourth, selling while adapting to change, and Friday the first of May, customer connection from a distance. So, if um, you want to book them, we've got some great speakers um, coming up um, on on direct marketing on selling. Um, so it'd be really lovely if you guys um, could tell your friends, tell um, the, uh, the people that you work with that this is available and it'd be really lovely if you could uh, spread the word for us because we all are helping each other as an industry. So on that note, I'm going to thank all our guests. Um, I'm going to thank our sponsors, um, all of them. If I can hit the sponsor thing, sponsors. Um, yeah, so uh, for all our platinum sponsors over the next four weeks and for our gold um, partner sponsors, we thank you for your support because um, certainly uh, as premium partners, um, this wouldn't happen without your help. So thank you once again. And thank you to our guests today for um, Huawei, for Zen... Uh, Zenshine and for um, I can't see um, for Ryzen. Thank you so much.